This video is to help you with some basic equation solving skills. We're going to look at some two-step equations. Remember your goal with solving equations is always to use inverse operations. So the inverse of addition is subtraction. subtraction. The inverse of multiplication is division to isolate the variable. So in this problem, the variable is x. Isolate means get x by itself. So I want x all by itself on one side of the equals and then a value over here. We're trying to see what value of x makes this a true number sentence. So six minus two times something equals 10. We're gonna use inverse operations to figure out what that something is. First, you wanna always look at the constant that's on the same side with the variable. In this case, that would be six. The number that's by itself is the constant. If I have positive six, what am I going to do to get rid of or cancel out positive six? I am going to subtract six. Some people draw a line to show that what I'm doing to one side of the equals, I go to the other side of the line and make sure I'm doing the same thing on the other side. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So I'm left with six minus six, which is zero. Zero minus two X equals 10 minus six, which is four. And obviously we don't need to put the zero, but I just wanted to show that that's why we're subtracting is so that we get a value, a constant of zero. Now I'm left with negative two X. The sign in front of a number always stays with that number. So this is negative two times x. The inverse of multiplication is division. Use your division line to show that we're going to divide negative 2x by negative 2. What we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So when I divide negative 2 by negative 2, I'm left with x. Technically, negative 2 divided by negative 2 is 1. Do I need to put the coefficient of 1? No, because anything times 1 is itself. So that's x equals 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. So here I have the solution x equals negative 2, which means if I wanted to go back and plug it in, 6 minus 2 times negative 2 should equal 10. Let's check that. 6 minus 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, and 6 plus 4 is 10. So yes, we solved the equation correctly. Very similar two-step equation. I'm going to draw a line through my equals. My constant is negative 4. What am I going to do to get to 0? If I have negative 4, I'm going to add 4. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. What I do to one side, I have 2. Do to the other, 3 plus 4 is 7. Bring down everything that's left, which is a positive 7x. Notice we're paying attention to the sign in front of the number. That is a positive 7 times x is equal to 7. This is multiplication, 7 times x. The inverse of multiplication is divide. Divide both sides by 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1. So 1 times x is x. 7 divided by 7 is 1. So x equals 1. We can go back and plug it in to check. Negative 4 plus 7 times 1 does equal 3. Negative 4 plus 7 does equal 3. Very similar, another two-step equation. Don't concern yourself with the fraction. This is just n divided by seven plus two equals two. Draw a line through the equal sign. First address by constant, plus two. The inverse of plus two is minus two, minus two on both sides. I'm left with n divided by seven equals zero. What is the inverse of divide by seven? multiply by seven, multiply by seven. This gives me seven times n, I can put seven over one, a whole number over one, seven times n over one times seven, which leaves me with n. That was the whole purpose of multiplying by seven was because it cancels out the divide by seven. So I'm left with n equals zero times seven is zero, n equals zero. 0 divided by 7 is 0. 0 plus 2 does equal 2. 
Now you are going to see problems with fractions. You do need to know your rules for adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing fractions. This is very similar to the last problem because we have a variable divided by 15 minus 1 fifth is equal to 3 fifths. This is my constant. This is the number without a variable. So I'm going to start off by doing the inverse of minus 1 fifth, which is plus 1 fifth. So I'm going to add 1 fifth to both sides. Negative 1 fifth plus 1 fifth is 0. 3 fifths plus 1 fifth. Remember, you have to have a common denominator to add. We do. So 3 plus 1 is 4. 3 fifths plus 1 fifth is 4 fifths. Equals Q divided by 15. This is division. The inverse of division is multiplication. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 15. 15 on top cancels out of 15 on bottom, so that leaves me with just Q equals 4 fifths times 15 over, I can make any whole number of fraction by putting it over 1. Here I can multiply straight across if I want to. 4 times 15 is 60, and 60 over 5 is 12. We can do it that way, or we can cross simplify since 5 and 15 are both divisible by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 15 divided by 5 is 3. Now we're left with 4 times 3 on the top, 1 times 1 on the bottom, so 12 divided by 1, which is still 12, so Q equals 12. We got one more. Okay, one more. Looking at fractions again. Again, I'm going to draw a line through my equals. I'm going to find my constant. My constant is negative one half. I'm going to do the inverse, which is plus one half. So I'm left with 2x over 5, 2x divided by 5, equals 5 plus one half. 5 is a whole number, put it over 1. 5 over 1 plus 1 over 2. Common denominator would be 2. So that one's going to stay one half. What am I multiplying by to get to? One times two is two, so five times two is ten. Ten divided by two is the same thing as five. But we had to have a common denominator to be able to add. Ten halves plus one half is eleven halves. So now I'm left with two x over five. You can look at that as two times x divided by five where you could then multiply by 5 and then divide by 2. Or you can separate that and say that's 2 fifths is being multiplied by x. Either way, you need to cancel out a fraction. You need to cancel out 2 fifths. Again, there's a couple different ways to do this. I'm going to leave it as 2 fifths times x, which is the same as 2x over 5. And I'm going to divide by 2 fifths, but knowing that you have to multiply by the reciprocal when you divide by a fraction, I'm just going to go ahead and multiply by the reciprocal. I'll show that in a different color. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 5 over 2. Again, dividing by 2 fifths is multiplying by the reciprocal. So 5 over 2 times 2 fifths is 10 over 10, which is 1. So that accomplished isolating the variable. Now I'm left with 5 over 2 times 11 over 2. I multiply fractions straight across. That's 11 times 5, which is 55. 2 times 2, which is 4. 55 is not divisible by 4. 55 and 4 do not have a common factor. So I can just stop with 55 fourths. 